Luke records for us this very powerful episode in the life of Jesus as he begins to call those apostles and disciples who will help him to complete the work of the Father, to carry on that work most especially when he completes his task according to the divine will. And despite the sins of those men, their weaknesses, Jesus calls them and they follow him. We hear at the end of the gospel today, they left everything and followed him. That encounter with Jesus had changed their lives. And despite their weaknesses and faults, they're given the strength of the Spirit. That's what St. Paul reminds us of in his letter to the Romans, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. You did not receive the Spirit to fall back into fear or anxiety or doubt, St. Paul says, but we received the Spirit so that we could cry out in faith that we do have a Father, a Father who guides us, and desires our eternal salvation. We all have, that, have that, the experience of Peter and the others. They have been working all day long. They're expert fishermen. There were no fish to catch that day, at least they thought so, and they were tired. No doubt they were ready to go home. Their work was kind of a failure that day, but not in the eyes of Jesus. Go out again, he says, put out into the deep. They must have had their doubts, but it's amazing. Peter does exactly what Jesus says. I will lower the nets at your command, and because of his faith, they catch so many fish that their nets begin to tear. Today we honor Saint Jose Maria Escriva, the founder of Opus Dei, a saint in our modern times. When he was canonized, Pope John Paul II called him the saint of the ordinary. Ordinary people, ordinary times, ordinary life. He was inspired along the way, a very holy man from his youth, by people like St. Francis de Sales, who said that holiness is not meant for just a few. Priests and nuns are not just the only ones called to holiness of life. Every single member of the church, all the faithful, every baptized person in every state of life is called to holiness. That's what St. Jose Maria began to believe with all his heart. He lived at a time in Spain where the church was under great attack and a great deal of that had to be because people perceived that those in the church were not authentic. They went to mass, they practiced all the rituals, but they didn't live the faith. Isn't it the same today? Catholic faith has no power, no impact to change the world or others unless it's authentic. Do people see our faith in what we do, in what we choose to do, how we treat others, what we say, our ability to love our enemy, to forgive those who hurt us. But most especially, St. Jose Maria believed what we hear in the book of Genesis this morning, you know, God created us for a purpose. He took man and settled him in the Garden of Eden, we read, to cultivate and care for all of creation, all of the work that we do every day. St. Jose Maria taught is a pathway to holiness, no matter how menial, how tedious, no matter how disconnected we think what we do every day is part of God's plan, it is. 
And it's in doing that work with great love, it should remind us of another saint that inspired Saint Jose Maria, Saint Teresa the Little Flower. We can become holy and saintly by doing the small ordinary things of life with the greatest love for God. Saint Jose Maria Escriva believed that through our work, through all that we do every day, we can bring the love of God into the lives of others. We can carry on that work of creation until it's brought to its fulfillment in the return of our Savior. The path to holiness of life is meant for every single one of us. So we take his words, his vision to heart. Despite our doubts, our fears, despite the feelings like Peter and James and John of being sort of overwhelmed sometimes by the things in front of us, we carry on with great faith, with great fidelity, knowing in our hearts that if we do everything well with the desire to please God, we can bring the love of God into the world in which we live by our authentic expression of the faith that we truly believe in allowing that faith to be part of every single thing we do. That's the challenge. That's what we pray for. That we too can become holy and perfect as God is holy and perfect.